Today I'm going to dig into some kitchen details. Now I know that when you are planning out your dream van, the general tours are great for those bigger ideas, but you also want to really know exactly what equipment to expect to bring and how to store it, and that's what I'm going to go over in today's video. Before we get started on that though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of my subscribers. We hit over 10,000 today and I am just super excited and just so grateful that so many of you are interested in this amazing van life. If you've seen the full tour video, you know that the Galavan is an all-electric vehicle. I have two different ways to cook. I use an instant pot and I use an induction burner. I'm gonna start with the induction burner and um, just a note about the noise, the background noise in this video. It has been super hot and the fans have been running non-stop. So that's those noises that you hear in the background as well as some traffic noises. The induction burner is stored below the counter and above the fridge. I've got a shelf that was made especially for it and it just pulls out of here really easy. There's a little um, ledge there to keep it from flying out as I drive so I don't have to buckle it in or anything. So it sets right on the counter, super easy, and there's an outlet right here, right next to the door to plug it in. I use these little silicone strips. I think I got them at a specialty kitchen shop, like a boutique kitchen shop. Anything will do um, just to balance out the, the induction burner. It's just so much easier to cook something when the cooktop is level. What I do is I put these under the feet depending on where it's level, whether it's, you know, whether I'm tipped from one side to the other. And if I'm tipped from front to back, I just turn the whole induction burner so that I can level it out uh, because the the strips that I have aren't long enough to go from front to back. They only do the front legs or the back legs. I had the luxury of designing the drawers to fit exactly what I needed to store. I know that not everybody has that luxury. That said, I want to show you how I store all of my kitchen equipment. I have two almost identical banks of drawers. One, uh, one side is deeper than the other, but they're both the same width. One side is next to the refrigerator, which gives off quite a lot of heat. The other side is next to the sink and there's no heat over there. So any food items I store on the sink side and anything that doesn't matter if it gets warm or not, like silverware and pots and pans, um, goes on the refrigerator side. We are on the refrigerator side. This is the bottom drawer. And in this drawer, I do have the Instant Pot here. And um, and I just store everything, the cord and, and the pot and pot and everything that goes in here. I store that all there. On the other side of this drawer is the Vitamix. And you can see that this drawer was built to house this container. So this is the container for the Vitamix and the Vitamix itself, along with jars. All of my jars are stored in these bags that are just super easy to make. Uh, the rest of the jars store in this box that I just picked up at a grocery store. Next up is my pot and pan. I only have one pot and one pan. I don't use the pot a lot because anything that I use a pot for, I use the Instant Pot. So oftentimes I'll use this as a mixing bowl. So here in the front of this drawer is my strainer. I just want to show you kind of how I store things because everything nests. Um, I've got a candle that's just a beeswax candle. I've got a little candle holder and because that's nice sometimes at night. And this is just an Ikea tool that I use to snuff it out with. And this is my guest bowl. And this is just a felted wool hot pad. It doesn't get used a lot, but it does get used enough to, to stay on board and it holds things. One of the things about vans is that everything needs to be, or almost everything needs to be um, dual purpose. So this is serving two purposes and I'm gonna show you how everything gets put back together so that you can just see how I store things. Put the hot pad in there and then the bowl and then the plate and then the little um, holder that my friends made me and the candle. Okay, coming to the pot, I wanna show you what's in here. So I've got a couple of felted coasters that I now use for um, just little grippers, just little hot pads that are just easy to grab and measuring 
cups. I, it's surprising how often I use these actually. And the other thing in here is just a steamer basket. I do want to tell you about this pot because it's been great. So it is an induction pot, so it is magnetic. And it's just a pot from Ikea. I'll actually have a lot of links down below in this video because I am really particular about tools and so I just think that you're going to like the things that I'm particular about and if you want to source the same things then those links will be there. Some of them are affiliate links and um, some of them are not like the IKEA pot. Putting this back together, it just this is just one of those grippies uh, shelf liners and then the measuring cups go in there and the little grippies. Putting these back I like to put the handles so that they face the corner so that the pot and the strainer don't use as any more space than they need to. So this one goes in here and you can see it's pretty tight in here but it works. The other things I have in here I've got my Vitamix pusher. I used to keep it in the bottom drawer with the Vitamix but I don't use it very often. It's just not in my way as much up here. Um, I have another felted hot pad and I have my cast iron pan. Now this is what I use most of the time when I'm using my induction burner. Uh, this is the lid for that IKEA pan and the reason it's special is because it fits on the Instant Pot pot as well. If you're using the three quart Instant Pot, um, go ahead and pick up that the link to this pot from IKEA and you can see which one it is. And then this is just a lid that fits the cast iron pan. This cast iron pan is pretty special. Um, this is a Griswold made in Erie, Pennsylvania in the early 1900s. They're nice and smooth. They are completely non-stick. The cast iron pans that are readily available now are kind of pebbly and so they're really hard to cook with. These, you're going to use a metal spatula to keep them all good, and they work great. Putting this back, I just put the lid on with these little uh, strips, and then I have strips on the upper lid. I just alternate those so that nothing rattles. Uh, the other couple of things in here, this is not really multi-purpose. This is a food chopper from Xylus. It just is so great at chopping nuts that I just, and I had room for it, so I decided to keep it. And this is just a little bar cutting board. I know it's really stained, but it is clean. Don't worry about that. And, um, and it's just easy to pull out for tomatoes or whatever. And then the other weird thing that's in this drawer, a beautiful kaleidoscope. The next drawer up doesn't have anything to do with my kitchen. It is just your standard junk drawer with pens and post-it notes and paper clips and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to show you that on this tour. I'm going to move up to the top drawer. This is my utensil drawer. I've got all of my knives here and they are all in these little not edge guards uh, from Amazon. And I've got a Henkel six inch chef's knife, tomato knife. I've got a backpacking uh, mini chef's knife and a paring knife that I love. Um, this is my favorite silicone spoon for cleaning up my dishes um, so that I'm not putting any food stuff in the garbage or in the gray tank. I don't use any paper towels, um, so this is what I do to clean up my plates and bowls. Um, here are my kitchen shears. I actually use these quite a lot. I mostly use them for cutting up salad. This is my main spatula, and it is a pancake turner. They no longer carry this size, but they do carry one that's just a little bit wider, so I'll drop a link for that. Um, this is my favorite vegetable peeler. It's from OXO and it just works so great. If you've never used one of these, you are missing out. And then this is just a tiny little grater for hard cheese that I picked up at a little kitchen shop or a little grocery store actually um, up on the Olympic Peninsula. I've got three each of forks. I've got two knives and I've got some serving spoons, the regular one and the um, slotted one. I have 
can opener. I've got a number of silicon spatulas just because I really like them. This one is kind of unique in that I use it, I use this end to pull off the trim if I need to do any van maintenance. Um, also in here I've got little tongs that I picked up at Cost Plus World Market. I traveled without these for a long time, but then I found that I really needed them for my Instant Pot for pulling stuff out without burning myself. And then I've got a, a corkscrew and I've got a bottle opener here and a citrus peeler, which I love. It's just one of those weird freebie Tupperware party gifts. <laughs> Next up, I've got a couple of wooden spatulas. I just love them. This one's a pie server, the smaller one, and then this one I use for rice and things like that. Not necessary, but um, but I like them. I've got clips, and I've got my um, measuring spoons. I have my gravy ladle, which is the ladle that I use for everything. And back here I've got a nutmeg grater. A nutmeg grater is a very specific item for a van. It is not necessary, but I've gone through like 10 nutmeg graters in my life because I like fresh grated nutmeg, and this one works so well that I just couldn't part with it. So it's on board, I use it occasionally. It has a spot, so I'm good with the single use. The top drawer of the sink side is half supplements and things like that and half spices. Again, this is the side that doesn't get too warm. Just because I know people are gonna be curious, I'll go through what I've got. In the back here, I've got some nutritional yeast, and then I've got some garlic, turmeric, cayenne, red pepper flakes, ginger, thyme, basil, oregano, and sage. I also have chili powder here in the front and some just multi-seasoning here in the front. And then a number of sal salts because I like specialty salts and my salt and pepper grinder. Next up is my food storage drawer. Um, I've got two of these glass containers. I've got two of the the square ones as well, but they're both in use. And then I've got these uh, stainless steel ones. This came in a three pack. It no longer comes as a three pack, but you can get the three pack with clear lids, which would be way easier. So there are three in here and they nest, which is awesome. Um, I also have my beeswax covers in here and my um, drinking glass. I just use this glass jar for ever, all of my drinking and then um, a lid in case I need to um, put this in the fridge. This one is both dishes and a couple of other items. So on this side, I've got um, some baking stuff. Not that I bake a lot, um, but I've got the stuff that I would use for baking. I also have my umami from Trader Joe's. I love this stuff for eggs and vegetables. It's awesome. Um, back here, I've got a teacup and a tea strainer. I don't use that very often. In fact, I don't think I've used that since I've been on the road, but I have a hard time getting rid of it and it's got a spot. Um, here I've got just a, an enamel cup that somebody gave me that I really enjoy. Um, my bowl that, that I use all the time, it's starting to get a little chipped, but I love it. I've got a couple of small plates. You can see everything is separated by the drawer liner, the spongy stuff. Um, this is a little cover for my bowl that um, was made in Eugene called Marley's Monsters, and I just really like it because um, then I don't have to have any plastic wrap on board. This is my salad bowl. I use this mostly once or twice a day, and I also use it for potlucks and that sort of thing. It's just lightweight, it doesn't break, and it's just easy to carry around. And then I've got two dinner plates as well that don't get used very much. Also in this drawer, I've got a spiralizer. Again, doesn't get used very much, but um, it's one of my favorite summertime meals and it doesn't take a lot of room. Just a regular grater. And also this awesome Kyocera ceramic mandolin that makes really thin slices. And then in the back there, I've got a funnel and a neti pot and a little shot glass that I only use for what I call an allergy shot, which is a swallow of water, two drops of lemon, two drops of peppermint, and two drops of lavender. This bottom drawer is my pantry drawer and it is a monster. I have a, a couple of containers that stack. In the bottom one, I've got my dry goods. And in the top one, I've got 
some jars and my stash of super high quality chocolate. And those containers I picked up at the container store. Uh, back here I've got vinegar, olive oil, I've got some dried onion, I've got some maple syrup, some coconut aminos. I just got an order of coconut milk, so I'm fully stocked on that. I've got some granola and some canned goods. The rest of my non-refrigerated food storage is under my bed. It didn't start out that way. I had a fruit hammock hanging just above the Berkey on the sink side. It was too hot and the fruit would bang itself against the wall. So I decided to start storing my fruits and vegetables under my bed. It's cool under there and it's safe for them. In a market basket, I've got my fruits and vegetables. And then I have another container from the container store that has extra jars and cans. And then I've got just one of my grocery bags with some extra food items that are just dry items. Last is my fridge. It is an isotherm inox drawer 130. It is 4.6 cubic feet, which is plenty big. And um, it doesn't draw very much electricity. I don't remember the numbers, but it's easy to look those up online. It's got a base drawer and it's got bottle holders here and it's got another drawer in the fridge that I use for eggs and other things like that. Um, up here is kind of my dairy section with uh, butter and cheese. And then I've got a freezer. It has been so hot and humid where I'm at that my freezer is really frosty right now. So I'm not gonna show you that, but just know that the stuff in there stays frozen and the stuff just below it on that shelf doesn't freeze at all. It just stays cold. So it's a great fridge. I hope you liked the details of my kitchen. If you've made it this far, I am assuming that you like this video. So go ahead and hit the thumbs up button down there. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification button. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. Feel free to share this video around. I appreciate your support. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey.